Aaron Daniels from the Healthy Creative Podcast shares his passion for creativity with you. If you're looking for interesting creative and design conversations, or just simple and effective ways to get more creativity into your life, then this show is for you. Aaron and his guests deliver simple, effective advice that promotes inclusion into creativity rather than unnecessary exclusion. Creativity isn't just for creative types. The result? A sharper, smarter, more creative you. Now it's time to join your host, Aaron Daniels, for the Healthy Creative Podcast. Hello, friends. Welcome to the latest episode of the Healthy Creative Podcast, brought to you by healthycreative.co.uk. I'm Aaron Daniels. I've worked in London's world-class creative industry for a number of years now. I work within design and art direction, but I've got a serious appetite for all things creative. This week, we're joined by sketch artist Mike Cope. Now in a world of contemporary art, where a blank space and a few colours can fetch millions, Mike's work looks the other way. He has the ability to effortlessly replicate likeness. I've known Mike's work for years. I sat next to him on our first day at college, where he calmly flexed his skills with the first drawing he laid down. Boom. The room knew. Enough said. And that's what we're going to be learning about today. How to draw like a badass. Let's dive in. Mike, 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 what's going on? Welcome to the Healthy Creative Podcast. Thank you for having me, Aaron. Why don't you tell the listeners a bit about your background? Basically, I studied graphic design, did a more branding and packaging background, which wasn't exactly my wisest choice I believe because I think I'm a bit more creative than that I think my mindset was what I'm going to be able to get a better income doing which I regret to this day so now at the age of 34 I've decided to flourish my real passion is being a sketch artist the whole idea came about by asking about being trained up to become a tattoo artist and the the whole process behind my pictures is similar to how one would go about tattooing on a human skin. Where did you get your drawing passion from? I think I've always had a passion for drawing from a, a very young age. I've always had pencil or pen to paper. Can't really remember how or, or why I got into it, but... I just really enjoyed it. it. It was just my way of kind of zoning out from the world and, and unleashing my creativity. How would you describe your work and style? I'd probably say that my work is kind of half realism, half kind of sketchy. I like doing like black and white, grayscale portraits, mainly focus on fictional TV and movie characters. My main inspiration was the incredibly talented H.R. Geiger, the creator of the Alien series. His work was just a massive inspiration. I'm quite a kind of like pop culture, sci-fi, horror kind of geek. So any of his work, it, it just ticked all my boxes. My more recent work it is more kind of influenced from a, a few photorealistic tattoo artists that I I follow, Rob Richardson and the kind of grayscale portraiture has really grasped me. All the pieces that Mike's going to be talking about today are going to be on the website, so don't be afraid to check them out, listeners. Do you want to describe what you've brought in? So I've got my portfolio with me here. First up is the grayscale portrait of Rick Grimes from The Walking Dead. This was using a grayscale Pro Marker set and a white kind of highlighter pen to do the the kind of lighting effects in the eyes, uh, on the beard, jacket zipper, etc. This piece took me around about four hours on an A4 sheet. Mike, did you know that Rick Grimes, Andrew Lincoln, his brother taught me RE at school? Really? I did not know that. Uh, Full of surprises. Okay. Andrew Lincoln... <laughs> Rick Grimes gave me my distinctly average GCSE. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got here? What have you got here? 
Um, so yeah. next up, we've got the badass villain from The Walking Dead, Negan. This piece, again, was on A4 portrait marker paper. This piece particularly took me about five five and a half hours there is a lot of highlighting details in the barbed wire wrapped baseball bat that he is donning so that was very challenging but probably the most rewarding when finished and next up is another walking dead portrait which is the character maggie mike do you like the walking dead i do indeed <laughs> it's, it's, uh, it's my bin show <laughs> Interestingly, a lot of these portraits came about by me posting one original piece on a Walking Dead fan site, and then passionate fans around the world have been asking me to do certain characters. So this wasn't actually next on my to-do list, but I had a couple of DMs on Facebook, and the next couple are actually requests from people, some from across the globe, asking me to do do them. So that was quite an exciting part of it. So the next one is Maggie, again using the Primarker series. This one was around about four hours work. Really pleased with the details around the facial area, which I, I just say that as this is my third piece in the series, I just think that I'm managing to kind of perfect my skill set here and uh, managing to blend the colours a bit better. Next, everyone's favourite crossbow wielding hero in the series, which is Daryl Dixon. This was another person, I think they were based in the States, that uh, the amount of comments I had on these character profiles and everyone was like, when are you going to do Daryl? When are you going to do Daryl? So I, I answered the fans and did a Daryl Dixon and this this one took around about five hours again a lot of highlighting in the hair and etc but really pleased with the outcome on this and then the final one in the series which is a commission is Katniss Everdeen the lead character from the Hunger Games who was wielding a, a nice bow and arrow I think one of my favourite sketches of yours is Eleven from Stranger Things yeah that was a, a really challenging one as well that was when I very first started to decide to go into the the kind of sketchy portraiture all the way through it i was like this isn't working this isn't working and then as, yeah as soon as i put the, the final touch on it took a always take a photo on my on my camera phone because it kind of shows how it looks from a distance mm. so it kind of shows up that re realism and uh, yeah i was really pleased with how it turned out and i haven't looked back since can you pick one of your illustrations and walk us through it from how you started it to when you know it's finished and everything in between? The piece that I will pick is going to be my, my personal favourite, which is the Negan portrait. Uh, my technique is influenced by tattooing. So I'd start off with a black and white portrait, a uh, high-res picture printed out. My process, uh, I start with any dark shades go go at it with the black marker uh, just kind of filling in all the all the solid bits and then basically work up from there so it's just almost going from dark to light which now that i think about it is probably a bit backwards because you should really be going light to dark but it just seems to work for me once i've done everything and, I, and i'm like you know what i think that is pretty much there I work in and do the really finite details using a fine point white pen. So it would be going through doing the highlights in the hair and on the nose, eyes. Barbed wire on the bat was excruciatingly long. And another really challenging one, uh, which I haven't used this technique on in any other piece, was the, the kind of cow skin effect on the leather jacket. And that was basically me kind of doing a fine kind of pointillism using the, the white tip pen and then manually smudging it with my finger to do a blurred kind of shiny effect and then when i think i'm i'm pretty much there i just pick a, a mid-range gray do a nice rough kind of sketchy gray background which i just think brings the picture to life just sticking a, a little bit of a background and then the final thing is hopefully sometime famous signature right at the bottom of the page to stamp my mark. What's the biggest challenge you have with any drawing you make? I would say the biggest challenge has got to be the pressure of making it look 
how it's supposed to look, which sounds ridiculous, but I always leave the face until last, because the face is just the most important bit of the picture, and if you mess up the, the sizing of an eye, or the shape of a nose, or even the shading in the face, it could ruin the whole picture, so... Yeah, the the biggest challenge and the, and the most nervy bit is is the face. They say the eyes are always the most important thing. I would have to agree. I think any anything around the face in in a weird way you can kind of wing it. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent accurate, but it's all down to the face, especially if you're doing like an iconic character or a, uh, a profile of um, like a, a family member for a commission. It, it's all in the facial features. You've just got to take that time and consideration and just nail it. Sometimes people kill a drawing by not knowing when to stop. How do you know when it's finished? That is a really good question. And I don't even think I've got the answer, a, a definitive answer. There's just something... If you are in the moment and being creative, something just clicks and you're like, you know what, I think that is all I can do on it. You know, I could have probably spent another two hours tweaking and I wouldn't have needed to. So I look at your work and for me, you seem to be able to convey accurate visual information without many strokes of the pen. For me, there's a bit of Catch-22 there. How does that work? Even I... I'm quite surprised with the outcome of some of these pictures that I do, knowing full well the technique that I use. Because my technique, if you saw me in real time, is very kind of sketchy. You know, when I used to do a lot of uh, kind of realistic biro work, it was all cross-hatching technique. So I think maybe that I was brought up doing that has kind of transpired into into these but on uh, all of the pictures the face does look kind of like the most realistic point so I think when I've nailed the face everything else is allowed to be a bit more free handy sketchy draw what you see sounds simple right but then there are people like you Mike who can effortlessly sketch the form and people who struggle for hours just to get the proportions right or seem to be stuck in a world of stick figures what's the secret? Like with me, it's, it's a weird one. Like ever ever since I was a kid, even my mum speaks to me and she was like, at an early age, what you were drawing looked like what it was meant to be, like even as a child. And all through my life, I've just... I can't even explain it. I, I haven't had any training, gone on any courses or anything. I've just had an ability to make something look like what it's meant to look like so how are you pushing your work forward what do you want to do where do you want to go i honestly don't know what my dream is at the moment i'm just trying to find Mm. myself yeah yeah, yeah. and you know with the feedback i'm getting from this this is obviously what i should be doing but how to apply it In, in all honesty like i love doing commission work but i couldn't survive on doing commission work for people so in a weird way like the whole kind of tattooing thing is without sounding negative but it's it's kind of all a bit down to the money side of things as well mm-hmm. because yeah i don't wake up and go oh my god i i wish i was a tattoo artist mm-hmm. i wake up thinking i wish i could get paid for doing something that i love if you were to unpick what's going on inside your head when you draw how would you describe the experience? Do you get into a flow? What does it feel like? Yeah, that's really interesting. It's hard to describe because five hours seems like an hour to me. Time just seems to whiz by and I zone out. Whenever I do my pieces, I have my favourite music on, which I, I just kind of get lost in, in the whole experience. I'm in the room, but I'm not really always there in conversation so I can I can answer certain things but I think when you're zoned in at that point you know you, you're just best to just listen to some awesome music whenever I I take the photos of my work that's when I kind of snap back into reality and then as soon as I get that pen down on that on that page 
I'm back in back in the game, and I, and I don't don't stop until I'm happy with what I've produced. This next question is this idea about looking but not seeing. Yeah. When I was younger, and I used to do drawing, and I showed my dad, and if it was wrong, he'd say, "You look, but you don't see." It was stuck in my head. Yeah. This idea of something's in front of you, you're looking at it, but you're drawing what you think it looks like. Yeah, yeah. So, I guess the question I'm going to ask you is. If we take one of your portraits, what visual information are you specifically zeroing on? And what information are you discarding? Yeah. Um, I think that anything like finite details, I think they could probably be easily missed when kind of replicating. Uh, It's really hard to tell what people would be digesting and and Mm. what they wouldn't. You know, some people can do stick men. Other people can do the basic human form and that's two different people, mm. two human beings, but Same both, the same thing. Yeah, and completely communicating it differently onto a bit of paper. It's it's crazy. I think most people would probably they would probably look at what they've done and be like, you know what, that that's done. Me personally, I just want to go that little bit further and just get it as accurate as possible. I'm happy when you hold one of my pieces up against the original and you've almost got double take so d- like doing the texture on that I noticed that it was there and then it was my thought process of how can I replicate it because it has to be replicated has to be in that picture we, we all do it we all miss tiny details but yeah it's just the, the kind of problem solving that you've I mean for me as an artist, that detail has to be in there. It's interesting how you talk about it as problem solving. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, the, I had I've had a couple of those. Um, thank God for the for the white the white highlighter pen. So I with some of my workings, I I you know do strokes and I get shapes wrong. Anything is fixable to a certain extent as long as you look at it and you're like, you know what, that is that is good. That's all that matters. We live in a world where artists, students, designers, they make conceptual work where the idea is so important, and I, I value the idea, but yet sometimes they can't draw what's in front of them. Is drawing important these days, Mike? Is it needed? Does it have a place? I, as a sketch artist, would hope that it would have a place, and I, I personally think that it should. I'm very much into film culture, so I follow a, a couple of concept artists for big sci-fi films, horror films on Instagram and stuff and pretty much 90% of their work is all digital so they don't need the, the physical act of drawing to become a successful artist which I mean I, I don't know whether I'm being a bit old fashioned but I would probably say that drawing is is just as vital I think if you've got the idea having the ability to put it down on paper in front of you that's just raw communication of your ideas not sticking it into a, a into a computer don't get me wrong some of their stuff is breathtaking and and I I do look at it and I I'm very envious and wish that I could add that to my repertoire being able to do something that good your skill would be able to do it on paper yeah I'll be like the paper ninja <laughs> right. that's my superpower <laughs> I think drawing is a foundation that opens wider creative territories. Yeah. For me, it's like a form of articulation. It's a way to articulate what's inside your head, to articulate yeah. things that don't exist. Um, for me, it's like a language, and I'm always annoyed when I can't speak a language because it's an ability to communicate. Yeah, definitely. So, the other side of the coin I think about is um, Da Vinci or the Masters. If Photoshop was available in their time, yeah. would they have used it? Wow mind blown <laughs> that's uh yeah I oh, no idea I would hope not yeah yeah right <laughs> anyway that's for another episode <laughs> I think that if we're honest with ourselves we'd all want to improve our drawing ability so now we're going to go through some common reasons that I often hear and Mike's going to give us some tips for how to draw like a badass so reason one the one I always hear is my drawing is rubbish I give up do you have the inner cynic on your work Mike how do you get rid of it how do you push through when you're not happy I think an important thing is to not get rid of it 
a hundred percent from my personal experience it's an important factor to keep hold of but it's more about control if you're cynical of your work if you learn how to control it it will make you a better artist every single picture that i have bought with me today there were points in it where i was like "Mm, you know what this isn't working this isn't going quite right did you want to quit never wanted to quit though never wanted to quit because it's just not about quitting it's just you know i i firmly believe getting to a finished point is also about problem solving as well that if you get to a point and you're like it's not working what can you do to make it work when i was growing up i i used to have amazing drawing tantrums because all of my work was done in biro so you can't get rid of biro but you can get rid of the canvas that you're working on so if it wasn't looking right i'd screw it up throw it over my shoulder start again i think it's it's just unlocking that passion you know if you're passionate about something then you'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it but never ever get rid of that inner cynic if you try drawing something sketching something and it doesn't work out first time it's it's a normal thing and just don't give up and and just keep at it because it'll it'll work and and it's it's an incredible feeling when you put a lot of hard work and effort into something and then it turns out how you want it to sometimes i think people pick the wrong subject to start with something which might be too complex What are simple exercises or subject matters that can help people get started without too much trouble? I would probably say, from my personal experience, start with something that you have a real passion about. If you want to get into drawing or improve your drawing skills, if you're into sci-fi, don't pick a bowl of fruit to draw because it's it's boring. It, it, It doesn't get your juices going. So pick something, a subject matter that you really are passionate about that you wouldn't mind staring at on a on a piece of paper for hours on end because you are passionate about it time goes quickly when you're enjoying something you do so yeah i I would say that there is a a balance between a, a good eye for observation of a of a subject matter but also make your surroundings uh a place where you can kind of escape to. So that's my advice. What questions do you ask yourself when you're drawing? The the only things that go through my head while I'm I'm drawing is how am I going to make this bit of paper represent what I'm looking at? You know, and then it's the only other questions that I get is if I encounter problems. So if I've done something and I haven't quite got the shape right, how am I going to go about fixing that? to make it look as good as I can possibly get it. And the final reason I always hear is the classic, I'm not talented enough. We've been told our whole life that there are some people who can draw and some people who can't. So the first time you meet any challenge in developing drawing skill, people give up and they blame it on lack of talent. Were you born with this skill? My mum in particular saw that there was a level of creativity, so she nurtured it. So rather than sending me outside to go and play outside with all the other kids it would be you know do what makes you happy and if drawing makes you happy here's some paper here's some crayons pencils biros or whatever and you just you just do it and when i was in school i can remember having a couple of knockbacks from uh, my art teachers who told me that i couldn't draw <laughs> one teacher told me that i could not draw and you do through life you get those little knockdowns, but as long as you just keep keep practicing, keep doing it, as long as you enjoy it, that's all that's all that really matters. I want to get inside your head a bit more for the listeners. What motivates you creatively? Why do you draw? Honestly, so, something that drives me to draw is the reaction of people, not necessarily close to me, because since posting some of these. Um, portfolio pictures up on social media i've had positive feedback from a lot of people that i don't even know and i can honestly say it's one of the best feelings in the world where someone compliments you on something that you put a lot of hard hard work and 
hard effort. And the thing is, creativity is very personal as well. So if it's your almost like a part of your personality is on that page, and people are, are, are responding really well to almost like to a part of you. So it's it's great. What do you hope people to take away from your drawings? It sounds a bit cheesy, but. I would just I would just love somebody to have one of my pieces maybe in their home or something and just get joy looking at it you know like like I said my biggest drive at the moment is just getting positive feedback from my work and and if they give you positive comments you know that they really like it and that's probably the the biggest reward out of it so what's one myth you would want to dispel to someone who wants to give drawing a go, but they're just a bit afraid? Well, I would definitely say the whole myth about not being talented enough just needs to go right out the window. Because if if you've got any element of creativity in your body, which everybody does, you, you can draw. And if you can put something onto paper that vaguely resembles what you're trying to draw then you've got the skill set there you just need to to hone in on it it is down to commitment like learning about yourself your techniques and practice 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 get to that point where drawing is something that you look forward to doing if if you're sporty you know you probably look forward to going and you know playing football or something why not have that same enjoyment put in pen to paper where would you like to send the listeners to find out more information about you if people want to commission you what should they do the best thing to do follow me on instagram i'm on there as mike cope 11 and drop me a message that is the the best social media platform with most of my work on it before we draw a line on this episode you see what i did there draw a line draw nice draw. nice <laughs> as a last question what's the biggest thing you know now that you'd wish you'd known when you started out what advice would you give to your high school self? The bit of advice that I would give is just follow your dreams and don't listen to anybody that tells you you can't do it. Boom. Get sketching, my friends. That was Mike Cope, sketch artist extraordinaire. Thank you for coming on the show, Mike. Thank you to you too, the listener of the Healthy Creative Podcast. I hope you enjoyed that. We're always keen to hear your perspective on anything we discuss or like to hear in future episodes. If you're a new listener, please don't forget to subscribe and rate us on the iTunes 5-star rating system. We want to make sure we get more of these and get some great guests on. I'm your host, Aaron Daniels. Until next time, on the Healthy Creative Podcast.